I was born in San Francisco. Uh, I can say I'm a second generation San Francisco. My dad was born there also, but his family came from Italy in the Tuscany area. And my and first generation Italian, my mother came over here when she was 10, 10 months old. We moved to the peninsula when I was about 11. Elbray. And then in 65, a few years after that, uh, dad decided, dad had been looking for a place to, uh, to retire to 20 years down the road. You know, they just started, him and my uncle just started making a little bit of money and in the family business. And so he f was looking in Cloverdale, Sonoma, Healdsburg, Napa, but he found this 70 acres in Napa in, in 1965 and purchased it and we would come up we were still living in the bay area in millbury but we would come up every weekend and spend some time during the summers for longer stretches uh but for a for a kid that was born in san francisco raised in san francisco and millbury coming up to the country napa was pretty country back then uh you know co compared to i mean it's still a beautiful country but it's the tourism has ra risen a little bit in the last god how many years is that uh 40 35 and 20 55 years uh, but it was great, you know, getting on a tractor, driving through the fields. Uh, there was 14 planted acres when we bought it, and we planted another 35. Uh, so we, we had a pretty good idea of what we were doing in the vineyards. And there was no thought of having a winery when it was purchased, or even through most of the 15 years we were growing grapes and selling grapes. It was uh, uh, more just, you know, someplace that Dad, I knew was going to be, be retiring there. My dad and my uncle decided instead of taking over his part of the business, they decided to sell the business. And that's when dad and I got this crazy idea. You know, why don't, we've had the vineyard for 15 years. Why don't we start a winery? Somewhat naive. I mean, we knew we were doing growing grapes, uh, but truthfully, making wine wasn't something. Well, I mean, we did a little homemade wine. So one of the first things I figured we needed to do besides plan for the building of the winery was hire a winemaking consultant. And I had just, uh, at the time, got a magazine that you get from your college, you graduate from once a year, Pomona College Graduates in the Wine Industry, because I had graduated from a small little liberal arts college, but apparently, unbeknownst to me, Don Chapelet graduated from Pomona, Tony Soder, Kathy Corson, uh, some pretty, uh, another winemaker that was working for Grish Christian Brothers. So I said, you know, I know Tony Soder. He was two years behind me. We played football together in what was considered very, very small college football at the time. And uh, asked him, who should I hire? That was down to two people. And Tony said, those are the only two I'd recommend, but I'd like to throw my hat in the ring. At that point, Tony was a uh, winemaker at Chapelet. And I'm thinking to myself, well, this guy, he's got some decent background, even though he's two years younger. He came up here right away after college. And uh, and I know I'd get most of his time because I was going to be one of his first clients. And God knows I needed the, the time of a consultant. So Tony Soder was my consultant. He was my mentor. I'd like to think that uh, much of what I know about winemaking, I learned from Tony. Uh, so that's kind of how we started uh it was getting real real quickly so we didn't get started on the building until february of 1881 with the idea that we were going to be crushing grapes end of august early september most of what we were planning we had already found out through 15 years of growing grapes that even though we had we were right in the middle of some great Cabernet production uh, area in, in, you know, between Yonville and Oakville in Napa Valley. That we had some of the shittiest soil in Napa Valley. It was really heavy clay. Well, you know, when you bought property in 65, you weren't looking at the soils the way we started doing in the late 70s and the early 80s, and even, even more so now. Uh, you just, you know, well, we, this is land in Napa Valley. So what we found, though, is that we could do a really good job with Sauvignon Blanc on these heavy clay-like soils. And uh, even Andre Telchev felt that we were making some of the best Sauvignon Blanc in the valley in the 1980s. So that was going to be 80% of our production. So we had to be ready early. Uh, typically, people never started picking before Labor Day, but that first, in 81, I think we started picking our first Sauvignon Blanc toward the end of August. 
we had just, I was working until two in the morning with the plumbers threading pipe to get the refrigeration on the tanks hooked up so that we could crush the next day. The only little glitch was one of the um, construction workers decided that our stainless steel tanks were a nice place to chill beer. So we pumped juice into a tank that had a 12 pack of beer in it. And so that was quickly moved to another tank, got the beer out of there. And that's one of the slight hiccups the first year, but it was, um, it was amazing. You know, I, I had worked with Tony the Harvest before at Chapelet because he said, if I'm going to be your consultant, I want to make sure you know a little bit about the mechanics of making wine. And, uh, but, uh, you know, crushing the grapes, being out, scheduling the pickers to pick. And I unfortunately had a great right hand, mo hand man, Jose Ortiz, who I couldn't have done it without him. He was our head vineyard guy, but he also doubled as my only guy in the cellar. Uh, so he, we spent a long, a lot of long nights that first year working until midnight, one o'clock. Because when the whites come in, you know, it's you try to get in as many as you can each day, but you could only go so fast because you're pressing everything. And a press, you know, press cycle takes a good three to four hours. So, uh, but we had a great time. Uh, I learned a lot. I'm still learning, uh, but uh, it was a great start.